Welcome to Electron Line. In the previous video, we learned how to calculate or how to get the equation to calculate a sub naught. In this video, we're going to learn how to find all the a sub n's. Remember, in the infinite sum, from n equals 1 to infinity, each term has an a sub n and a b sub n. So here, we're going to learn how to calculate these a sub n's. After all, when you try to calculate the Fourier series, it all comes down to finding the a sub naught, all the a sub n's, and all the b sub n's. To do that, we remember the rule that we learned in video 3. We know that if we integrate the sine of n omega t from 0 to t for one period, we get 0. Likewise, when we integrate the cosine of n omega t for one period, 0 to t, then we also get 0. And if we multiply the integral of the cosine times the sine, that also becomes equal to 0. So that allows us to eliminate some unwanted terms and isolate a sub n. And so the trick here is to integrate both sides of this equation. So what we're going to do is we're going to integrate, the, or not integrate, but we're going to multiply both sides of the equation by, let's see here, how about the cosine of m omega t, where m can be any integer. Again, you say, well, why do we do that? Because when we multiply, this times this, we get cosine squared, and we can find a particular value for that when we integrate, but when we integrate the sine times the cosine from 0 to t, that simply will disappear. It will become equal to 0. So we're going to multiply this through and see what we get. So on the left side, we get f of t multiplied times the cosine of m omega t is equal to a sub naught times the cosine of m omega t plus the infinite sum from n equals 1 to infinity of, here we'll get a sub n times the cosine of n omega t times the cosine of m omega t. Oop, I want to keep that there. So plus b sub n times the sine of n omega t times the cosine of of m omega t. And let's put parentheses around it like that. All right. Now what we're going to do is we're going to integrate both sides of the equation. We're going to integrate the left side from 0 to t. And of course, that means we're going to need a dt here. And we're going to integrate the right side. Now, of course, we're going to integrate this. So integrate this from 0 to t, which means we're going to need a dt as well, plus we're going to integrate this right here. And we can take the a sub n outside integral from 0 to t. We're going to need a dt. Plus, we integrate this from 0 to t. And again, we're going to need a dt right here. Just as we said before, we now know that with the rules we learned about Fourier series, that this integral will always equal 0. So we can simply say, all right, this equals 0. And likewise, when we have the sine of n omega t times the cosine of m omega t, this could also be n, it doesn't matter, this will also become equal to zero when we integrate. That's from video number three, which means that this is the only surviving term, that this remains, and this is only not equal to zero under the condition that n must equal m, which means that we can say that the left side here, the integral from zero to t of f of t times the cosine of m omega t dt is equal to, well, this is 0, that's 0, this is the only remaining term. We're no longer going to need this because this will now turn into t over 2, and that means we have equal to a sub n times t over 2. Now, all we have to do is solve this for a sub n, which means that a sub n is equal to, multiply both sides by 2 over t, times the left side, which is the integral from 0 to t of f of t, the original function right here, times the cosine of n omega t dt. Now, why did I change that to an n? Because this is only true if n is equal to m. If n is not equal to m, then this integral will not equal t over 2, then this integral will equal 0. So this integral right here will equal 0 if n 
is not equal to m. So this is only valid if n and m are equal to one another, and if those are equal to one another, I can say that instead of writing m, I can simply write n. Oh, here we go. That's the n I'm looking for. <laughs> there you go. So this came over here, and we can just simply write as an n so that these two are matched to one another. So for every a sub n, you can calculate it using this equation right here. All you need to do is find the original periodic function f of t, multiply times the cosine of n omega t, of course omega being the frequency of the function, from zero to period to one single period. And that's how you find all your a sub n's.